Hello everyone, it's me, Scumbag04. By zero request and unpopular demand, I have decided to make an actual SFM tutorial so that you can animate like me. But while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's free, easy, and I'm trying to get 1,500 subscribers by July, so let's achieve that goal. And without further ado, let's begin. So, this is the first tutorial of the SFM tutorial series. Today, we will cover the basics of Source Film Maker. In this video, we will cover installation and creating a session, user interface, basic controls, and any notes and tips. So, without further ado, let's get into the installation process. To start off, go into Steam and head to the Steam store. There, on the top right, search up Source Film Maker. On the page, scroll down and click this icon to download it. Once it's finished downloading, it'll appear in your library under the software tab. Before you start the software, right click the library icon and select properties. There you can input launch options. Launch options are commands that are activated when Source Film Maker starts that apply to most if not all games. The launch options I have here are performance boosts, such as Insecure, which disables the VAT protection system on Source Filmmaker, which is completely unnecessary. There are more that I could explain, but for the time being, I'll leave them in the description for you to use, along with an article about what they do. Once you click Launch, you'll be met with an option box. If you click SDK, you can go to a new window which you can edit file paths. I'll explain this in another tutorial, but for now, click Source Filmmaker and wait for it to load. Once it's finished loading, you'll be met with a new window where you can access all sessions. You can access sessions you've already been doing, but considering that you have just started to download Source Filmmaker, you will not have any sessions. So, let's create a new one. On the text box there, type SFM Guide and then click Create. Now this is the part where most Source Filmmaker beginners struggle. Right click this window and select Load Map. You'll have a bunch of Team Fortress 2 maps already loaded in. And for the sake of this tutorial, Go to the text box down below and search up stage.bsp or stagebig.bps. Quick note, some Team Fortress 2 maps do not work on SFM. This is because the maps in question are compressed, which Source Filmmaker does not support. Once it loads in, you'll see this. Congratulations, you have completed the first section of this tutorial. Now, before we learn the controls, we first need to understand what the software is displaying. The screen in the centre is your viewport. This is where your main camera slash work camera can view what is currently displayed in the session. Note that you can toggle the work camera and main camera through this button. On the left, there is the animation set editor. This contains all the models, particles, cameras, lights, and groups contained within a single scene. On the topic of scenes, down in the bottom middle, there is the clips timeline. This is how long and how many clips are in a single SFM animation. On the right, if you click this button, you will appear in the motion editor. As the name implies, this is where you move objects and bones on models. We will talk about this in the animation section. Then lastly, when you click the third button, you are set to the graph editor. Unlike the motion editor, this is used with the marker control, which we shall explain right now. Currently, we have been in this one area for ages, so let's move it, shall we? 
By clicking this triangle next to the camera and selecting Change Scene Camera and New Camera, you can now create a camera. To move said camera, left click the viewport and press W, A, S and D to move around. You can also make the camera look in different directions by left clicking and moving the mouse. By left clicking and pressing R, you could rotate the camera at different angles. Finally, for cameras, by pressing Z and X, you can move up and down. By using the scroll wheel, you could zoom in and out. Now let's head back to the clip editor. Left click the right bar and drag it left or right to change the time of the current session. And at a preferred point, click the blue bar and press B. You should now see it split into two. Now select the second bar and go to the motion editor. Move the camera to a different position, then drag the white bar back before the cut and press the space bar to review the footage. You should now see the camera has changed position on the screen. Congratulations, you have made your first SFM scene. Not much, but it's a start. Let's say we want the camera to move during one of the scenes. Right click the animation set editor and select create animation set for existing elements. Then click camera 1. While the camera is selected, go to the graph editor and press M to make a bookmark for the first point. Scroll to another point in the scene and then move the camera to a different position within the area. Now when you go back to the clip editor and press space, you should see that the camera should move to where the final point was. Last tip before the video ends, you can shorten or enlarge any of the scenes by dragging the start or the end to a desired location. For notes and suggestions, I suggest you mess around with the software and try to build some familiarity around it. That's how I actually started off SFM, just messing around and wondering how things worked. If you're ever confused, just look it up on Google. In the next tutorial, I shall teach you how to load models, lights and particles, and their respective settings. Again, please consider subscribing and turn on the bell to be notified of the next tutorial or video of mine. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.